Who? You. What? Spring produce. Where? Your local farmer's market, but your grocery store is okay too. When? Right now. And why? Stick around and I will let you know. Hi there. Welcome to the Recipes with Ray podcast. As you can tell from the intro, today I am taking you through the spring produce. What is in season now? I'm in the northern hemisphere, so we are coming into spring, depending where you are in the con- cont- contiguous United States, the lower 48. Why should you care? I will give you four reasons. One, fresher, especially if you're going to your local farmer's market, they are harvesting the fruit, the veggies, right when they are ripe or just about ripe so they can bring them to you fresh. So with being fresh, that comes with more flavor. And with growing in the peak season for that fruit or vegetable, you're going to get more nutrient dense produce. And along with all those benefits you already have, it tends to be cheaper because this is when an abundance of that produce is being harvested. So lots of benefits for you and your wallet, whether you're able to go to the local farmer's markets that are starting to pop up right now, or if you're just going to your local grocery store. So let's get into it. I'm gonna list them off, give some explanations, and then I'm gonna go into what I like to use some of these fruits and veggies for what dishes or just eating them by themselves, which of course you can do with most of them, but there is one that is not recommended that you eat raw. So let's start off. First, apricots. So these come into season in May and that goes through the end of summer. Then we have artichokes. Their season is March through May. There's asparagus. I think I have, if you listen to my fall produce episode or perhaps winter episode, I forgot to look back, but asparagus may be a vegetable that has a spring season and then they have another season in the fall. So asparagus does have an early spring season. Then I'll list all my sources down below, but some, not every list had all of the same fruits and veggies. So there are some that were slightly questionable to me, but I will tell you. Some of those include avocados, bananas, broccoli, beets, bok choy, and celery, and carrots. Now, in my opinion, root vegetables are not spring vegetables. So carrots, beets, in my head, are not spring vegetables, but they made it on the list. So those are Bananas, broccoli, carrots, celery, to me are like those produce that are staples that just seem to be in season all year round. But moving on, then we have cabbage, which is in season late fall into early spring. So that may be where our root vegetables are, quote, in season because they have a late fall into early spring and they can, a lot of root vegetables can be stored over a longer period of time before they even make it to your supermarket. Then we have cherries, which dark cherries. In my grocery store, dark cherries start going on sale late summer, early fall. So in my head, that's when their peak season is. However, I was told that late spring is a cherry season, so. Next, we have fava beans, also known as broad beans. This next one, fiddleheads, AKA fiddlehead ferns. Their season is late April into early June. They are said to taste a little bit like asparagus with a hint of spinach and they have a nuttiness. Now, these are the ones you can get sick from eating fiddlehead ferns raw. And they're kind of a cute vegetable, if that can be said. 
they have it's like a thick green swirl or coil the look it looks like a fantasy vegetable and the name fiddleheads reminds me of harry potter so let me know if you've watched harry potter read harry potter do you get harry potter vibes from the name fiddleheads i never heard of these before next up we have garlic scapes and these are the flowering stem of the garlic bulb they have a grassy garlic flavor which is less potent than garlic cloves when the garlic scapes are raw and then they are sweeter than garlic when the garlic scapes are cooked then we have green garlic which is also known as young garlic or spring garlic and this is just garlic that is picked very young it has a milder and sweeter flavor compared to mature garlic. Then we have greens. Arugula, dandelion greens, collard greens, mustard greens, pea shoots, watercress, and sorrel, which I had never heard of sorrel before. A few more produce items that to me don't seem like spring fruits or veggies, but they made it to several lists, include lemons, limes, a variety of lettuces, mangoes, onions, and pineapple. Herbs. Herbs is one that was also on my winter list. So if you listen to either the fall produce or the winter produce episodes, there's a lot of overlap between seasonal produce just because the fruit doesn't know that, okay, from this month to this month is fall, this month to this month is winter, etc. So in my head, spring is maybe March through June, give or take, depending where you're at, what your climate is. But like we said, with the root vegetables, they can go from late fall to early spring or there's a whole bunch of overlap between seasons. So when it comes to lemons, limes, and pineapple, for example, and mango, those are more tropical fruits, so they have a more consistent climate to be grown in. So I think that's why some produce we can get all year round. It doesn't seem to ebb and flow with flavor and sweetness like some fruits and veggies do because it is grown in a pretty consistent, in an area that has a pretty consistent climate. But I will digress. So we have herbs. Think chives, parsley, dill. We have leeks. We have mushrooms, especially morel mushrooms. Now you, these are not ones that you're gonna find in your grocery store. If you do, let me know. You probably have a fancier grocery store than I do, but you have to go forage for these. I'm not sure, someone let me know if you're a mushroom expert. Are people growing morels in warehouses? All of my knowledge is that they are strictly wild and you have to go forage for them if you want them. Delicious mushrooms. If you get a chance to try them, try them out. Next we have nettles. Again, this one reminds me of Harry Potter. <laughs> They are prickly and can sting you, so if you are foraging for them, be careful. They have an earthy and tangy flavor when they are cooked. Peas. Peas are another one that, to me, is not a spring vegetable. And I think this is just because growing up, having a garden, the pea, you plant your seeds in the spring, and then the peas weren't ready until summer, at least, like late summer. So, peas made several lists, so I'm telling you what I've read. Next we have radishes, another root vegetable. Then we have ramps, R-A-M-P-S. They're wild onions. They look very much like a green onion, but they have broad leaves, leaves and a purplish white stem. They taste like a cross between onion and garlic, which I think is fascinating. I have never had a ramp, but I would definitely try one out. Then we have rhubarb, along with scallions, also known as green onions, 
spinach spring onion, which is not the same as green onion or scallions. Spring onions have a bigger bulb at the base and they are sweeter than regular onions and stronger than scallions. Down to the final three, we have strawberries, Swiss chard, and turnips. Turnips, another root vegetable, they were on previous season lists, but I want to go to strawberries. Strawberries are very much a spring fruit for me. Growing up, going strawberry picking, it was late May to early June, I think. It was definitely early June because if you waited too long, if it got too close towards the end of June, there were no more strawberries to pick. All right, so let's go back. A bunch of the produce on my list I have never had, I've never had access to, and so I don't have recipes for you. However, in the links to my sources, some of them, uh, they do link recipes in their lists of sp seasonal spring produce. So Taste of Home was definitely one that had recipe suggestions and some of the other ones, but I will link those down below in the description on YouTube or the show notes if you're listening on podcast. But let's go to apricots. So apricots, I feel like are a sleeper fruit. If you guys are jam connoisseurs, marmalade connoisseurs, and you have never had apricot jam, you must try it. It is so delicious. Like I'm, I'm a person, raspberry jam, strawberry jam, those are some of my top picks. But if you slip apricot jam into my options, apricot jam is going to win. It on toast, fabulous. Then artichokes. I, I don't know what to think about artichokes because the first time I had artichokes was in some sort of casserole and I didn't care for them. But then I have spinach artichoke dip and I'm a fan. So I don't know if it's just the cheese. I mean, cheese makes just about anything better. So you could always make a homemade spinach artichoke dip, asparagus, I don't do a whole lot of fancy things with asparagus, but you can wrap that with bacon or prosciutto. But what I do if I'm grilling it or if I'm sauteing it or if I'm roasting it is just melted butter and garlic and salt. You can do olive oil too, but the taste of the butter goes really well with the asparagus. Avocados, bananas, broccoli, um, avocados, I'm an avocado toast kind of person, but you can make all sorts of um, sauces or dips or dressings with avocado if you're someone who doesn't like the texture of it. You can work it into things and it has a lot of healthy fats in it. Bananas, I mean, who doesn't know what to do with a banana? I stick them in smoothies most of the time. Um, broccoli, I have another episode on the podcast of one or two ways that I do broccoli. One of them is I take frozen broccoli. Go to your frozen vegetable aisle, pick up a pack of frozen broccoli florets. 16 ounce bag is probably pretty normal. You take the whole bag of frozen broccoli, no need to thaw it, dump it into a big mixing bowl, pour a quarter cup of oil over that. I use light olive oil, you can use canola oil, you can use vegetable oil. Then a heavy-handed sprinkling of both garlic powder and onion powder, probably about a tablespoon of both. Seems like a lot, you need it. Just go with it. And then a good sprinkling of salt, maybe a teaspoon or two, and then a little bit of black pepper, probably a quarter teaspoon would be fine. Toss it in your bowl, put it onto a baking sheet, spread it about, give everyone some room. Pop that into a 425 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. You can leave it in a little bit longer. The 30 minutes is going to give you more golden brown crispy goodness. And then you're good to go. Delicious. Or you can take about two cups of frozen broccoli. You won't be able to do your whole the whole bag. Large skillet. Mine's probably a 10 or 11 inch skillet. 
I have a couple, two or three tablespoons, probably two tablespoons of oil in my skillet. Heat that over medium heat. Put in your two cups-ish of frozen broccoli, and then a heavy hand of garlic powder and onion powder, probably at least a teaspoon of both. And then sprinkle over some salt, some pepper. Give that a stir in your hot skillet and let it sit for two or three minutes. Don't touch it. Let, let it get a little bit of brown on the bottom. Then give it another stir. Get everyone moving a little bit. Let it sit for two or three more minutes. In the meantime, grate some Parmesan cheese. Quarter cup would be great. Third cup would be great. However much cheese you want. Once your broccoli is fork tender, you can stab it with a fork. It's no longer frozen. Turn your heat off, sprinkle over the Parmesan cheese, and pop a lid onto your skillet. And just let that sit for a minute or two until the cheese is melted and gobble that up. But let's move on. We have, I'm just going to skip over beets, bok choy, and celery. I would like to cook something with bok choy. Like I see it at the grocery store and it's calling my name, but I don't know how to use it. So I don't want to buy it and not use it and it go bad. So if you have any suggestions and you're listening on YouTube, leave me a comment for how to use bok choy. We have cabbage. And coming into the warmer months, all I can think of right now is coleslaw. It's a picnic, it's a picnic staple. Great on pulled pork sandwiches, barbecue pulled pork sandwiches. Yeah, there's so much you can do with cabbage, but there is so much cabbage in head of cabbage. If you know, you know. Um, cherries. Dark cherries are my favorite, and I don't like to do anything else with them except eat them. I'm sure there's loads of options. It's a fruit. You can do just about anything with fruit. Fruit cobblers, fruit pies, fruit jams. So many options. Fava beans I've never cooked with, but I believe you can use them to make falafel. Fiddleheads. I don't even know where to start with those. But you can get on Google and I'm sure they would give you a whole bunch of ideas. Garlic scapes and green garlic I would just use in place of garlic you just get different aspects of that garlic flavor with the garlic scapes you're getting less potent slightly sweeter with green garlic you're getting milder and sweeter than mature garlic greens you can do with any you can make salads you can um, just use it put it on a burger you can put it on a sandwich you know what to do with greens Oh, one, no, two things that I forgot to list off to you guys. One is jackfruit. If you've ever seen these at your grocery store, you may not have known what it was. Usually when they're at my grocery store, there's no more than like four on display because they are like the size of an unusually large watermelon, but they're kind of like bumpy greenish brown on the outside and it's a little intimidating. However, I've been told you can use it as a meat substitute. Like people will make pulled pork with the meat innards of a jackfruit. Fascinating. I've never had it. I'm intimidated to try it. But I know two people who have used it before and they didn't die, so I think it's okay. One day I might try it. But the other produce item that I failed to mention was kale. So there's a bunch of greens on our list. Our herbs. I recently made this green goddess ranch dressing and it has spinach, fresh dill, fresh chives, a green onion, a shallot, raw cashews, nutritional yeast, oil, garlic. Did I say garlic? If I didn't, it has garlic, some salt, I think that's about it. It's going to be coming to the Recipes with Ray YouTube channel, the video tutorial on how to make that. I was, it is delicious. And it's, there's so many nutrients and so fresh. Like I, dressing is delicious. It's creamy, it's flavorful, but you know, sometimes like your ranch dressing isn't bringing you any nutrition 
to your meal. It just is there for the flavor, which I also appreciate. But this Green Goddess Ranch dressing, it is not a substitute for ranch. However, it has that dill and chives aspect that is also in ranch. But the Green Goddess dressing has the nutrients from all of your herbs and your spinach and the nutritional yeast and the cashews. And I use um, extra virgin olive oil and amazing. I love finding those homemade dressings that have a lot of nutrients in them. So like I don't feel bad when I just spoon a whole bunch onto whatever I'm putting on. If you guys are interested in seeing that recipe, be sure to hit subscribe if you're listening on YouTube or I will leave my channel link down below in the show notes for all of you lovely listeners on podcast and you can go subscribe and hit that bell so that you are notified when I release that green goddess res- green goddess ranch dressing <laughs> recipe video. Next we have leeks and a very common recipe for leeks is a leek and potato soup and it's one that you cook down the leeks, you cook down the potatoes, there's other flavoring ingredients that go in there and when you cook it down and it's in the broth you take an immersion blender to it and you make a nice luscious creamy soup then we have lemons limes mango pineapple you guys know what to do with those lettuces also and then we have mushrooms and onions when i think of mushrooms and onions i think of burgers and steaks but also I think of like mushroom stroganoff, caramelized onions that are used in dishes or burgers. That's just where my brain's going. But with mushrooms, going back to morel mushrooms, the only way I've heard and made them is sauteing them in some butter and some garlic and some salt. I think they're a mushroom that they're delicate, so it's more of like, a garnish or a standalone ingredient. Nettles. Nettles are green. They are they are a vegetable, but I don't know how you would use them. I think it may be more of like a warm... I'm thinking of how collard greens, they're... I want to use the word aggressive. They're a very hearty, leafy vegetable, whereas the nettles, I don't think are leafy, but I think they are something to be cooked down and they're a warm vegetable. Let me know if you have more, if you have ever eaten nettles and how did you cook them? Then we have peas. Sugar snap peas all by themselves are delicious, but they're great to put in any warm dish. Shepherd's pie, fresh salads. Radishes are another ingredient that I've never eaten them warm. I've always eaten them raw. Ramps, I think, would be easy to incorporate into a dish being so close to a green onion, but having a cross between an onion and a garlic flavor. Those would be easy to incorporate into cooking. Rhubarb. If you have never had rhubarb, this is your sign to try it this summer. It looks, if you've never seen rhubarb, it looks like celery, except it's purple and green and it requires sugar. It's not like an apple that you can just bite it and eat it. I'm sure you could, but I don't think it's gonna taste very good. But if you make just like a rhubarb crisp, delicious, but also strawberry rhubarb anything is a solid choice. Strawberry rhubarb pie, strawberry rhubarb bars, strawberry rhubarb crisp, strawberry rhubarb crumble, strawberry rhubarb compote that you can put on top of your ice cream, You could probably make a strawberry rhubarb baked oatmeal, strawberry rhubarb coffee cake, strawberry rhubarb muffins. I could go, I could go on all day. Then we have scallions, spring onions. Again, easy to incorporate. I think you could just try them in place of onions in some of your dishes and just kind of experiment and see like how it alters the taste. How do you like it? We have spinach. I don't love the taste of too much spinach, but I use spinach in a lot of things. Like I'll put a little handful of spinach in a smoothie. I'll put a handful of spinach leaves on a sandwich or in a quesadilla. Too much spinach 
to me it does not taste good but i still incorporate it just because i know it has good nutrient benefits to it swiss chard i've never cooked with swiss chard again i think it's along the lines of collard greens that they're cooked down so that they're softer but it may be similar maybe you can use it similarly to how you use kale kale is also very tough but if you put some what is it is it salt and lemon juice over your kale and you like massage it it tenderizes the leaves i could be completely wrong about swiss chard you'll have to let me know and then turnips i've never had a turnip i've had a parsnip i've never had a turnip turnips are more round and they have a purple and white color to them again they're a root vegetable i think of roasting them putting them in a soup and strawberries i skipped over strawberries but strawberries delicious by themselves dipped in chocolate dehydrated made into jam or preserves there are recipes for freezer jam if you've never had freezer jam it's something i grew up with and i mom i'm sorry that i don't know how freezer jam is made however i think it's similarly to how you make jam on the stove but then you put it in the freezer so i don't know if it's I don't know. <laughs> I probably should have called my mom before recording this and figured out why it's called freezer jam. But I mentioned freezer jam to a friend a couple weeks ago and she's like, oh yeah. So there are people out there who know what I'm talking about. Um, what else can you make with strawberries? Like I said, all the things, strawberries and rhubarb are like best friends in baking. You can slice them up, put them in pancakes, put them on your oatmeal. Anything you can do with the fruit, you can do with the strawberry. And strawberries are one of those things where if you live in an area where strawberries are grown, look into seeing if there are any farms near you where you can go and pick strawberries. It's a great weekend event, whether you're going with a friend, a boyfriend, girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your kids. It's a decent family outing. Um, you may just have to watch the youngins because they may try they may want to eat more than they put in their bucket because that's what i did when i was little but um it's a great opportunity to get outside before it might be too hot we're still in the early late spring early summer season when strawberries are around so weekend activity idea for you guys but that is my spring produce list Again, I'll leave all my sources down below. Um, some of them, like I said, the Taste of Home one definitely had some recipe ideas for some of the produce that I mentioned. I will leave a handful of recipe links down in the description slash show notes for you guys if you guys need some inspiration. Or you can just go on over to Pinterest and type in recipe using fiddleheads. Recipe with rhubarb. Pinterest is the place to go for recipes, in my opinion. Thank you all for listening. If you are listening on podcast, I'd be grateful if you would rate and review the Recipes with Ray podcast. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what I can do better. I want to bring value to you guys, so let me know what you think. And always remember that Jesus loves you and he wants a relationship with you. I'll leave you with that. Thanks again for listening and I will see you guys in the next episode.